This article appeared in the Living section of the Dallas Times-Herald on April 4, 1985. His and Hers. Cruising has never been so satisfying. By Drew Jubera. It sat there, or lounged there, or spread itself out and ate the ground below it there, looking hungry, hellish, confidently orgiastic. A 1960 hearse with tail fins and tinted windows poised in Wayne Harris's backyard like a long jet black land arc. Harris, 23, and the owner of the hearse prepared to slip into it. He was squat and shaggy. Physically, he and the car seemed at odds. But psychically, they were one. Subscribers to the same moonbeam, an electric arc humming between them and almost combusting whenever Harris ran his hands along the hearse's sleek exterior. Harris took a step back. His eyes drifted wide and tried to corner the car. It looked ready to fly. Harris took a deep breath. I'm nervous, he said. It's like the first day of school. I'm always nervous when I go out, but especially in something like this. Harris took another breath as he slid into the car. Then he grinned, his nervousness mugged abruptly by an opposite dark force. He turned on the ignition. The hearse coughed, sputtered, burped. Then it heaved and quieted, appearing to finally breathe, inhaling and exhaling instead of sparking and firing, as if the engine had been removed and replaced with a pair of lungs. You get to be with me, Harris then said, still grinning, when we debut. It was Friday night. In Arlington, the air was warm and moved around in little flutters. Perfect, Harris had said. He'd hoped for this. Tonight was his coming out, in the hearse. He was taking it to Cooper Street, the mile-long cruising strip near the University of Texas at Arlington. Cooper Street had the clout that Harris had been seeking, more so even, he said, than Forest Lane, the popular cruising strip in Dallas. Cooper Street makes or breaks a car with pretensions and the hearse's pretensions were not hard to hear. The hearse, Harris had intoned, frankly, is Ultra. Harris knows from Ultra. Last year, he set the denizens of Cooper Street on their chromium ears with his maroon Buick Regal, the 1984 National Car Stereo Champion, which he titled in white paint on the car's rear window. Eruption. Harris won $5,000 at that competition then picked up that much again, showcasing Eruption in front of car stereo dealerships around town. But Harris retired Eruption to his garage, undefeated. It had served its purpose. Now it sits covered with a soft layer of dust, except for one spot, a large, clean, conspicuous circle in the middle of the roof where the National Car Stereo Championship trophy stood so immodestly for so long. But with Eruption put to pasture, Harris was left without a car or at least without a real car. He had a car for work, a tiny Plymouth Horizon lent to him by Pagephone, the mobile communications company, servicing beepers, mobile phones, and two-way radios, where for the last three years he's worked as a systems engineer. But a Horizon wouldn't do on Cooper Street. Harris needed something to top eruption. That's the way he is. He's motivated by challenges. I'm goal-oriented, he explained. Still, he felt the pressure. After winning the national championship last year, he got a bank loan for $6,500, merged it with the $5,000 he won at the national competition, and bought $12,500 worth of car stereo equipment. That left him looking for a car big enough to hold the 2,600 watts he planned to channel through a 30-inch subwoofer, which if you know nothing about stereo equipment, means he'd accumulated enough decibels to blow a hole through a low cloud cover. I knew I needed something big, Harris said, attempting to reconstruct the logic that had led him to his hearse. I thought about a van, a Suburban, a Chevy truck. I don't know how I thought of a hearse, but when I thought of it, I knew it was right. It made a lot of sense. It was big, had low mileage. It's never been driven over 15 miles an hour. This one was in a pasture, he added, of the 60 Cadillac hearse he eventually bought for $850 from the Summers Funeral Car Company in Oak Cliff. It wasn't running. The tires were all flat. When I saw it, I said, that's the one. I mean, he nodded towards the rear of the car. Those fins. Harris had no problems with the darker spirituality universally associated with hearses. He's not spooked by its potential. Not now. It was kind of spooky the first two or three nights having it sitting out there next to the house, he said. 
But after a few days, I never even thought about it. I'm too scientifically oriented. It'd be interesting, he added, of sharing the hearse with the giddy souls of its former occupants. I want to believe in something like that, but it's been pretty quiet. It hasn't moved or anything. The hearse made its professional debut two Sundays ago at Fair Park for the Dallas Car Stereo Crank It Up contest. Harris arrived early in the morning with a convoy of friends, each turning on his car lights as he approached the Fair Park entrance. We didn't turn the lights on while we were on the highway or anything, Harris said. I don't know how old people react to it, the hearse. It depends on your attitude. I don't want to hurt anybody. It's just a car. Harris placed first in the Pro Division Open Class Competition. He won a truck. By the next day, he'd sold it for $6,500. He also said he set a record in the contest, but that wasn't official, since there wasn't anybody there from the Guinness Book of World Records. Harris was asked, record for what? He answered, sound pressure. He also said he doesn't plan to put the money he made from his truck into an attempt to top the hearse. I think I'll retire after the hearse, he said. I don't think I can do any better. But as of last Friday, Harris wasn't through yet. The hearse still had to pass its public debut. To a certain Arlington element, the sight of Harris's hearse would be the single biggest spectacle ever to cross its eyes. The moment was not lost on Harris. I've been looking forward to this for five months, he said of his own anticipation. He went on for several minutes about how he'd spent every off-work minute putting together his car. He wore a hole in the theme of sacrifice. This is what makes it worth it, he said, all those cold nights I worked on this thing. Then the sun set, and the Arlington sky turned bright with the washed-out light from miles of neon. Harris pulled his hearse into the street, curled behind the dashboard, lit like a 747 control panel. There were more knobs and switches on the dash than Harris had fingers and toes. A smile from some inner self-satisfaction rose to his cheeks. A mile into the drive, Harris pulled into a self-service car wash. He wanted to remove dirt left from the previous night's storm. A crowd of professional Cooper cruisers, as Harris refers both to himself. He put 30,000 miles on his Regal last year driving the one-mile strip and the rest of the street's regulars gathered quickly. Most were drawn by the music that blew from the hearse's windows. Much more than a wall, it was like an impenetrable force field, an accumulation of heavy metal noises capable of repelling anything from buckshot to mortar fire. Those who drove in cars behind it said they could feel the bass pounding in their chests. Inside the hearse, Harris slipped in his own earplugs. Still, even with those, the effect was like being conked rhythmically with an empty Coke bottle. What kind of stereo you got in there? One teenager asked Harris, dropping his head into a side window. The ultimate one, Harris answered. Man, the kid replied a moment later, lifting his head out of the car, his face flushed and slightly contorted, his hair mushed. He looked like he'd just drowned. You've gone too far. It's different. That's what I look for out here, said Steve Smith, an 18-year-old Cooper cruiser who paints cars in Irving. I've seen all kinds of stuff here, from souped-up hot rods to this. i never seen a hearse. Harris dried the hearse and pulled it out onto Cooper Street. He slipped a Van Halen laser disc into the stereo system. We'll get at least one ticket tonight, Harris said, increasing the volume. He said he's been ticketed at least 15 times for amplified noise. Though he did say the Arlington police have left him alone since he became a national car stereo champ. I spend so much on tickets, he added, I could have built a whole nother car probably. Harris began the night's cruise by turning a circle in an Arby's parking lot. The teenagers and older college students who sat on and around their cars reacted as though witnessing a celestial phenomenon. They cheered, threw fists in the air, contorted their mouths grotesquely, screamed at the top of their lungs. From inside the hearse, however, with quiet riot and kneeling another tune, they all looked mute, with not a sound reaching the driver's seat. Past a row of disbelieving faces pressed against the glass at the Arby's drive through window, Harris steered the hearse back onto Cooper Street. Hundreds of cars sat bumper to bumper, moving every few seconds a couple of miles an hour. Cars passing in the opposite direction had stopped in awe when they saw the hearse. After they shouted, mutely, for several seconds, Harris would turn down the volume and lean an ear in their direction. God damn, one kid shouted from behind his steering wheel. It went on like that for hours. At times, the reaction of those in other cars upon seeing the hearse bordered on a cult reverence. 
A half dozen college students in the back of a pickup truck stood up and applauded. A few others, however, voiced displeasure. There's always a few, man, Harris said when they passed. But on average, I come out ahead. I like it when the guys are impressed. They're hard. Girls are easy. A girl two cars later stopped, leaned out the driver's side window, and handed Harris a milkshake. And so it went. At one point, his ears ringing, his fingers curled permanently around the steering wheel. It's like driving a train, man. Harris tried to explain his passion. I love it, he said. It's the life I missed in high school. I went to a school in a real small town, Marfa. The whole town had like two pinball machines. I work with the most professional people in the world during the day, Harris went on. But these people out here, they're different. They're my family. They're the friends I don't have in my professional life. They don't care how I dress, if I make good grades in college. Harris has accumulated about 100 hours towards a degree in electrical engineering. We just drive up and down a road, bumper to bumper. Most people cuss out traffic like this, but this is an association with people. I, he paused. There's no way I can explain it, he said finally. It's too complex.